Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is uh, Sunday, October 10th. Uh, so this is the day before my uh, daughter's birthday, Aubrey. So I'm going to try and get this edited and posted on her birthday. So if you would comment below and wish my daughter happy birthday, that'll make her day. Yeah, probably not, but go ahead and do it anyway if you would. <laughs> but uh, So today uh, I'm still following up looking for that supersedure hive and uh we still need to go in hive 10 and that's the hive that's just right above that uh extension cord reel there uh, i haven't checked that one yet so i'm running a little bit behind i've been working a lot on the uh, getting my uh fall garden planted and uh, some cover crops over there in that nasty soil i've been working on that soil and getting uh some uh, irrigation put on it some uh, drip hose and things like that so i've got that going uh and today we're getting a cold front coming in and uh it's overcast right now it's probably about 80 85 degrees and uh, we had a heavy wind before but it's calmed down so i think that cold front is almost here and we're supposed to get uh, some pretty severe storms uh this afternoon coming out of this and they're talking about tornadoes and things like that so welcome the rain but i i could do without the uh heavy heavy storm parts but uh so uh also i've got my mic check here and while uh, i'm in that hive 10 i'm going to do a uh if it looks uh amenable to it if it's got a good population you know it's not dwindling down uh and i don't think it is i will do a mic check with this uh, easy mic mic check and I think uh, the number on this, you're not supposed to exceed uh, six mites per half cup. And uh, I'll go look that up and verify it. But uh, you, sh you uh, get down to the brood frames uh, when you want to check your mites. So it's real important that you find your queen so you don't shake your queen off and dump your queen in alcohol and kill her. Uh, because you do have to kill bees to do this test. Uh, it's one cup and... Uh, I think that's 200, 300 bees supposedly, and you do all the math and it comes out, uh, I think it's, uh, you don't want to exceed six mites uh, per that half cup. So anyway, we're going to do that. Uh, this is a Varroa Easy Check, and uh, I used this last year. It works really good. I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link below. You can check it out. It's got a little basket in there, and the bees go in that basket, and you just swoosh it around, and... Uh, the little holes are kind of oblong, so when you swoosh it, it makes a current, and it really uh, rubs, washes the alcohol across the bees, and the mites drop off pretty quick. Uh, last year, I had trouble getting alcohol because of the COVID and all that, but uh, this year, I, I got plenty of alcohol, and I did use some, uh, let's see, someone told me to use a windshield washer fluid. Uh, it worked okay, but not real good. Not like alcohol. Seemed like the alcohol, man, they, they drop off like that. Uh, I guess it makes them let go, or I don't know. Uh, the the uh, solution of the alcohol maybe washes them off better. I don't know. Alcohol works best, what I've found. So let's get into Hive 10 and uh, do a mite wash. And if I have time, I may do a few random spot checks around. Uh, so let's get going before... Uh, the rain comes in and let's see what we find in hive 10. Okay, here's the area where we had the crawlers on the ground and the crawlers died the following day. And that was right here at the bottom of hive nine. There was about 200 bees right there that acted like they were sick and crawling around. So I thought I had a virus in there. Uh, some people suggested it may have been pesticide because when I inspected Hive 9, it looked great inside. And also, Hive 9's queen was not marked. And this year, that hive had a blue marked queen. So it had last year's queen in there, and they superseded her. So also, right in here was two balls of bees on the ground, and there were virgin queens being killed. So that's why I'm checking these three hives right here uh, for supersedure. And this hive we checked, it was good. It had a marked queen. This hive had a marked queen. This hive didn't. So our supersedure may have came from hive nine. 
but we need to get into Hive 10 and just check it out and uh, we'll do a mic check while we're in there. Uh, the dearth has let up some. I noticed the bees aren't taking uh, syrup on the feeders that I have as fast as they were. Uh, some of them have stopped, uh, but I haven't checked them this week. But uh, So I th I'm pretty sure the dearth has slowed down a little bit. Now, so last week we got six tenths of an inch of rain and parts of the state got quite a bit more. But uh, man, we'll take it. It was really super dry. And we're supposed to get some rain here. 100% chance at uh, six o'clock this evening. It's a beautiful day. It's perfect for uh, checking beehives. Got a breeze, overcast. I'm gonna go ahead and use some smoke. So this hive looks pretty strong from the top. Let's see what this thing weighs. Uh, this is a medium to heavy hive, so I would say they don't need fed. So I'm going to put this uh, nuke box right here, and I'm going to set the frame that I take out in here and keep it covered up uh, for robber bees. And hopefully we can find our queen and get our... Uh, might check sample from right up here and we don't have to go into the bottom. So there's a good waxed frame and they have not touched it. So I'm not going to worry about covering that up. There's nothing on it to attract bees. But that wax might attract some robbers, we'll see. This is a all nectar here. So when I say nectar on this, this is natural nectar. This isn't sugar water. This is uh, this hive has not been fed. Last week I pulled off uh, my remaining six supers for my uh, late summer fall honey, which we didn't have much of a fall flow, if any. So of those six supers, I probably got one and a half to two supers full worth of honey that I can actually harvest. So this is a food frame, all nectar. This side is honey at the top and pollen down there in the middle. So also want to give a shout out to Guardian Bee Apparel who provided me this nice suit. Got rid of that old funky one. <laughs> it's got nice tight elastic so bees can't get in there. It's been working great. So here we got a little bit of brood and a few nurse bees. This would be a good one to shake off uh, to do our mite test. I do want to find that queen though, if I can, just to make sure we don't shake her off in the alcohol. Quite a bit of brood here. There's our queen and she's unmarked. So we're gonna put this over here and put the lid on it. So this could have been the supersedure hive. It's been so long uh, since that happened, I think four weeks now, I won't see cups, uh, supersedure cups where they made that queen. She was a small queen let me give you a shot of her real quick. So I think there's two frames here we can use for our mite check. I don't know if we'll get enough bees though off of that. So here's our queen. She's digging around there looking for a place to lay an egg looks like. There's a good shot of her. So she's a decent looking queen. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, since she's not marked, 
I'm going to uh, catch her in the queen catcher and get her marked and then I can shake these bees off and that'll be my part of my sample. So let me go grab my uh, queen catcher and we'll be right back. Okay, so when I went up and got my queen clip, I guess my uh, mic cable came unplugged. So I'm going to voice over this shot here. So this is the uh, one-handed queen catcher here. And uh, has a little plunger that you push down and a little slide that you slide under the queen. So you'll set it down on your queen from the top like that. And then you slide the little slide right there underneath her. But you got to be careful that she's up on the side and not on the bottom so you don't chop her legs off because that would be a bad thing. And uh, once you get her in there and uh, you get her secured, you'll push that little plunger right there, push it up, and uh, wait till she's standing on the foam so her backside is to the top where these little bars are. And uh, then you push your pin uh, down right there and you mark her when she's lined up between those bars. And you'd be real careful and not push her real hard because you don't want to squish her. Uh, so that foam in there is pretty soft, so it works pretty good. So the queen actually jumped off the frame she was on onto this uh, frame here that there's no comb. So there I've got her captured. And uh, normally I put that block of wood underneath the frame uh, so I don't squish a lot of bees. But there's no bees on the back side of that frame, so I didn't use it. So now I'm waiting for her to kind of crawl up on the side. You can see her kind of walking around in there. And uh, once I see her, uh, sometimes you can nudge them with the little slide and they'll, they'll go up. There, she's on the side. Got her captured there. Uh, there's an attendant bee in there with her, one or two. So uh, shake the pin up real good, get the ink mixed up well, and uh, prime it. So I'm going to get these little bees here out of the way. And uh, here's how I prime it. Get a little bit of ink out. So, so see, it comes out fast sometimes, and you don't want that to happen on top of your queen. It would just ruin it and uh, mess up your queen. So you want it wet, but not dripping. Uh, so you don't have to push down real hard on your queen when you mark her. So uh, now I'm going to get this attendant out of the way and uh, get her in position. So you kind of wait till they line up. See how she's lined up through that bar? Then you just mark on that little bald spot on their back there. You don't want to blob it on there thick. You just, just get a nice cover, nice coat. And when you release it, you do it fast, like that. Because if you go slow, she'll walk across the top and drag ink across her back, rubbing on those little bars from the inside. You don't want that to happen. So uh, you want to be sure she's in the shade, and uh, now let's get over to and do our mic check. Okay, here's my uh, supplies for doing a mic check. So I've got my alcohol here, and I have a little container with some paper towels in here. So after you've done one hive and you want to move to the next, you need to clean out the alcohol, clean out your mic check. Uh, so I use the paper towels. I'll lay it on top of this and pour the alcohol through it. So the uh, paper towel acts as a filter and you're going to lose some of your alcohol. Uh, so I got some more here. But, uh, and also got a half cup scoop here. So this is 300 bees, which man, I don't know how you fit 300 bees in there, but that's what they say it is. So you scoop it up. This is full. You dump it in and to get below six percent to get below three percent you want uh, less than six or less mites is a three percent mite uh, rate in your hive so you want below three percent so this, these are the things i use right here okay so we got our queen right here marked and uh here's this frame of bees here and a few over here so i'm gonna so these are mostly nurse bees i'm gonna shake them into this tote and then I'll grab our next frame. Go ahead and get this off and get it ready. So let's uh, figure out which frames we're going to use here. So I need to remember this is the spot where the queen came from and we need to get that frame right back here. 
we're going to use this frame here and the one next to it. Lots of nurse bees on this. So you just use a good sized tote or a box or whatever. So the field bees will fly back over here and go in the hive and the nurse bees will all stay behind. Those are the ones you want to sample. You don't have to shake them real hard. You don't want to smack them around. And let's get this frame right here. See the brood there? Let's see, that one goes back here because that was the one our queen was on. Put things back in the same order you found them in the same direction. There's a few left on this uh, outside frame here. And I'm gonna get this covered up for now. So here's our tote with all of our bees. So you see most of them stayed, not many fl uh, flew off. So we got a good sample of nurse bees here. So I'll just shake them down in a corner, get my scoop and uh, put them in the uh, easy mite check try and get this where you can see what i'm doing here so i'm just going to knock them down in a corner there's my half cup scoop in the alcohol and get the lid on quick so we've sacrificed these bees but that's a small sacrifice to make sure that hive is good so all these bees can go back. So one little half cup out of all these bees, just nothing. So I struggled with uh, killing bees to, to check the hive. It's no big deal if you got a strong hive like this. And we'll release our queen right here where she came from on this uh, frame right here, right between these two. She's on the door right now, so I don't want to open it with her hanging onto that. I want her to get, get down off of it. There we go. And there she goes right there. Nope, oh, she's on the top walking around. Let's get the lid on. Yeah, so they're really fanning in there because uh, of the smoke and the queen was gone for a while and the queen was kind of up walking around at the top a little bit there. But uh, let's uh, check our mites and see how we're doing. And another thing, when you do this, make sure you put everything back in the hive you got it out of. <laughs> okay, our bees are all in this little basket in here. And uh, we're just going to shake it up. And uh, they die fast, so they don't they don't suffer any and then you swirl it around this direction and that's the way the little holes are shaped so it gets uh, the alcohol flows through there pretty good and then you'll start seeing mites dropping out there's one right there so so far we've got one or is that a mite yeah it's a mite whoa my lid's not on good 
I must have had a cross threaded. Here we go. Man, that'd be great if one's all we find. I'm not seeing any more. So I've shaken them up pretty good. And one is all I found. I'll shake it up some more, but you, you get the idea. So you don't want more than six. Yeah, so if six is to 3%, uh, one I guess means a half a percent, which is pretty darn good. Uh, so that's the way you check them, you run down the line. I like to do just spot checks. I don't like to do every hive. Because of the time, it takes a lot of time to do all that. Uh, last year, so this is, this is something I found interesting. Last year, I treated, hive, I treated all my hives three times. I did a three by seven, three treatments, seven days apart. So theoretically, I should have got all the mites with my oxalic acid treatments through the brood cycles. So, and as they open up, more bees come out and you treat it again. So you get the mites that were inside the cells. That's the reasoning behind doing multiple treatments. So I did three by seven. On high 15, I checked it. And uh, gosh, I'd have to go back and look at that video, but I think I had uh, like 17 mites after three treatments. So man, uh, that tells me you do need to do checks. And if you've got a mite bomb like that, uh, you need to hit it again. And I hit high 15, three more treatments after that and got it down. So let's go over to 15 real quick. Uh, I, I did the treatments and I, I pulled the, the little bottom board and cleared it off. There were a lot of mites on it after uh, three treatments and I gave it a fourth. So let's go pull that bottom board and see if any more fell from that fourth treatment. And a lot of people noticed when I was doing my oxalic acid treatments, a lot of, it billow, a lot of the vapors billowing out the back. Uh, that's because of these uh, screened bottom boards and this insert. This insert doesn't provide a real good seal to keep the vapors in. And uh, so I, uh, I so when I pulled this out after the third treatment, I found quite a few mites. Uh, it had a good drop. So I cleaned this off, scraped it off good, and put it back in and did the fourth treatment. So uh, let's see what we've got here. This isn't working real good. So that's a small hive beetle right there but uh, i see a mite right there that is one so yeah there's not many on here i believe that's one right there so the mites are the kind of a discus shaped kind of an oblong there's one there think that's one so even after the fourth treatment uh, they've dropped a few here's one right here so the all the brood is in this area I'm not seeing many mites out here uh, that might be one right there <laughs> this is tricky Yeah, so I'd say this hive is good to go. I mean, we could test it again. But uh, from the looks of this, uh, we got it, done a good job on them. Yeah, so treating and checking for mites and knowing where your, your mite count is, that's very important. Uh, don't be one of those people that says, I don't think I've got mites, because uh, you probably do. I think uh, further north you go, the less problem you may have with mites, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, here in uh, central Oklahoma, we definitely have them. And I know uh, down in south, uh, southern states, they definitely have them. So if you're in the same latitude as Oklahoma, plus or minus a little bit, uh, you definitely need to make sure uh, you're treating for mites. So when you get a new hive, you've got a nuke from someone or you've got a package of bees, you've had a brood break and you killed out a lot of the mites just from that. So you may not have a lot of mites your first year, but I didn't have any when I first started, I don't think, because I didn't test, I didn't know any better. But you know, 
uh, I've been doing this for quite a while now and I have noticed uh, hive decline and I started testing and I, I found a direct link between uh, high mite loads and absconding and things like that. So yeah, you need to test for them. You need to make sure uh, you don't have a mite problem. So that's the end of the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, check out this Guardian uh, bee jacket on uh, guardianapparel.com. And uh, I will uh, put links below down to that. And thanks to Guardian for providing this. If you missed the last video, uh, I do a complete review on, on and talked about all the features of this jacket. Uh, the face comes unzips the, the veil so you can get a drink or scratch your nose or as Jason Christmas said, uh, you can sneeze. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is an awesome jacket. It's way lighter than my other one. The elastic fits great. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. And thanks to Guardian Bee Apparel for providing this. So I'm really going to like it. But, uh, it's getting dirty fast. I've only done like three hive inspections and <laughs> it don't take long. But uh, also, if you missed my last video, you missed my uh, Gladiator intro. I've been planning that for a couple years, uh, trying to shoot an intro like the Gladiator movie. It's, it's kind of corny, but <laughs> you ought to check it out. Uh, that's the end of the video. Give me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.